Welcome to this instructional video about linear programming. Linear programming is a method for finding a minimum or maximum value of some quantity given a set of constraints. Linear programming problems involve two major parts. The first is to identify an objective function. The second is to identify your constraints. The objective function is an equation that models how to find the quantity you are trying to maximize or minimize, with an emphasis on this being an equation. The constraints are always limits or restrictions stated in the problem, so those will always be expressed as inequalities, namely involving less than or greater than values. Let's begin a linear programming problem by just trying to set up the objective function and the constraints. Here is our example. You are planning a fundraiser that goes from 8 a.m. until noon. You have found enough supplies to wash 50 vehicles. You plan to charge $5 per car washed and $8 per van washed. If it takes four minutes to wash a car and nine minutes to wash a van, what amounts of cars and vans would you want to come to maximize income or profit? So to set this problem up, we should write an objective function and the constraints. To do either, we need to identify our variables. Let's let C represent the number of cars and let V represent the number of vans. Therefore, if we are ready to write our objective function, we then need to determine our objective which in this case is to maximize profit. As we look through the information, we should notice that we earn $5 per car and $8 per van. Therefore, our profit will be 5 times C plus 8 times V. But there are limits or restrictions on us as we try to maximize our profit. Those are called our constraints. So to write our constraints, we need to determine our limits or restrictions. The first limit is that we only have enough supplies to wash up to 50 vehicles. Therefore, C plus V needs to be less than or equal to 50 because the number of cars plus the number of vans needs to be less than or equal to 50. The second constraint in the problem is that our fundraiser only lasts for four hours. Four hours is the same as 240 minutes. And as we can see from the information in the problem, it takes us four minutes to wash a car plus nine minutes to wash a van. Therefore, four times C plus nine times V needs to be less than or equal to 240. In this particular problem, there are two hidden constraints as well. Since we are working with cars and vans, we know that these variables must have positive values. We cannot have a negative number of cars nor a negative number of vans. Therefore, C is greater than or equal to zero and V is greater than or equal to zero. We have now finished the first two steps, which are the setup steps for a linear programming problem. In order to find the solution, however, we need to start making some more calculations. The next thing to do will be to graph our constraints to find the feasible region. The feasible region is the section of the graph containing the points that satisfy all of the constraints. In our linear programming problems, our constraints are inequalities. Therefore, our feasible region will always be a shading region, the shaded region that is the overlap of all of the constraints. To graph the constraints in our particular problem, we have lots of options. Our first constraint was that C plus V needs to be less than or equal to 50. The first option for graphing this would just to be let C equal 0 and V equal 0 to find the two intercepts. Those are 50 with 0 and 0 with 50. The other option would be to change this into slope intercept form which comes out to be V equals negative C plus 50. As we test points or consider this inequality, realize we need to shade below this boundary line to find what is a solution. 
The second constraint is 4C plus 9V is less than or equal to 240, and we have the same two options. By plugging in X equals 0 and Y equals 0, we can find our two intercepts, or we can rearrange the equation to get V equals negative 4 ninths times C plus 80 thirds, so we can graph this as slope-intercept form. When the line is in place, realize once again we will shade below this boundary line because the problem is less than or equal to. Remember also we have two constraints that our variables need to be positive. So therefore we need to be greater than the x-axis and greater than the y-axis. If all of these graphs are made correctly, the graph of all of our constraints should appear as this graph appears. The only shading shown on this graph is for the feasible region, which is technically where all of the shading from all the different parts overlap. Now notice in this region, there are lots of possible points that will lead to a maximum profit, which is our next hurdle to solve. How do we know which point in the feasible region will maximize profit? There are thousands of possible points to check. How do we know which one will maximize things? The solution is that there is something called the vertex principle for linear programming. This states that a maximum or minimum value will always occur at a vertex of the feasible region. A vertex is always just a corner point or an edge of the feasible region. Therefore, our next step is to find the vertices of our feasible region. Vertices are typically one of two kinds of points. They are either x and y intercepts, or they are a point of intersection of two constraints. If it is an x or y intercept, remember it needs to be a point that is the corner of a feasible region. So only select points that are connected to the shading. The points of intersection will be where two constraints cross, which is a system of equations. Remember you can solve systems of equations by either graphing, using elimination, or using substitution. So to solve our problem, we have this graph with feasible region. Three of our vertices are intercepts, the point 0, 0, the point 0 and 80 thirds, and the point 50, 0. The final vertex or corner of the feasible region is the intersection of our other two constraints. I listed them here in slope intercept form because many of you will have graphing calculators that can find the point of intersection for you. If that is not an option, remember you can also solve by using substitution or elimination. However you solve that system of equations, your solution for the final vertex should be the point 42, 8. This means we are now at the point where we know, based on the vertex principle for linear programming, that one of these four points will maximize profit. How do we know which one of the four is the best? That is our final step. To find the maximum or minimum value, we need to take the vertices and place them into the objective function to test which one is best. For this particular problem, we need to do one small step before using our objective function. 80 thirds is not a legitimate value for the number of vans. Therefore, we round that down to the number 26 because we cannot have part of a van, nor can we round up because that would exceed our constraint. So after the rounding, our four vertices are 0, 0, 0, 26, 42, and 8, and 50 with 0. Plugging each of these into the objective function leads to profits of 0, $208, $274, or $250. At this point, we just select the best answer, which is a profit of $274. Since that was for the point 42 and 8, that means we want to have 42 cars and 8 vans, which will maximize our profit. In summary, to solve a linear programming problem, there are five major steps. You need to write the objective function, which will be an equation. 
you need to write the system of constraints, which will always be inequalities. You need to graph the constraints to find the feasible region. You then need to find the vertices or the corners of the feasible region because those are the points we need to test in the objective function to find our solution. I hope you have found this video informational and helpful for solving linear programming problems.